Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a solution that I have used in shared office spaces and co-work facilities. In this solution, I'm going to create two networks, one for employees and one for contractors. Each will have a wired and wireless access to their network. We will do this using the VLAN feature of PFSense, Edge Switch, and Cisco Access Point. This is a very simplistic version of my original solution, but it does allow you to see how everything can be set up and easily expanded to cover additional networks if needed. I will not be showing you how to configure firewall rules. This is important if you want to keep your networks truly separated. If you're planning to use a solution, you will need to do a little bit more work. I drew this very impressive diagram so you can see what we're trying to do. I'm going to rely on some default behavior from these devices to minimize how much we need to configure. I know diagrams alone don't give you a full understanding of what is going on, but I'm also going to connect everything together and configure everything from their default settings. Hopefully once you see all the steps taken, VLANs may finally click. Maybe this will be the video that you figure out when to use a non-tagged port. VLANs can be very complicated and there is no way I can cover the full scope of what VLANs are capable of. I don't consider myself an expert here, but I have used VLANs enough to know they can be very useful for certain types of solutions. Alright, let's connect everything together now. The red box is our PFSense router. The red cable is our internet and we are connecting that to the WAN port. The black cable connects from our router's LAN port to port 1 on our edge switch. On port 15, we connect our white cable to our Cisco access point. And that's all there is to the basic setup. In a real setup, you would also be connecting all the client computers. But in our setup here, I'm just going to connect my computer to port 2 to do the configuration. We are going to start by configuring PFSense. If you are setting up PFSense for the first time, open up a browser and enter HTTPS 192.168.1.1. The default username is admin and the PFSense password is PFSense. Please select your time zone and change your password. Leave the default DHCP and LAN IP settings to their defaults. By doing this, we have already configured our employee network, and we just need to build out our contractor network now. We will be installing the Traffic Graphs applet so we can monitor some network activity when we reach the testing phase of our setup. Next, we create our VLAN ID for our contractor network. Select Interfaces Assignments menu. Select the VLANs tab and click Add button. Select the LAN parent interface. In the VLAN tag field enter 33. In the description enter contractor network. Click Save to complete the VLAN setup. Select Interface Assignments from the Available Network Ports drop list, select VLAN 33, click Add, click on the newly created Opt1 interface, click Enable Interface, change the description to LAN 33, change the IPv4 configuration to Static IPv4, Change IPv4 address to 192.168.3.3.1 and make it a slash 24. Click Save and Apply Changes. From the Services menu, select DHCP Server. Click on the LAN 33 tab. Click Enable DHCP Server on LAN 33 interface. In the range field, our from IP address will be 192.168.33.100 and our to address will be 192.168.33.200. Click Save.
From the firewall menu, select Rules. Click on the LAN 33 tab. Click the Add button. Change protocol to any. Click Save and Apply Changes. And that's all the configuration we need to do in PFSense. Click the Status menu and select DHCP Leases. We are now going to configure the Ubiquity Edge switch. Default login is UBNT for username and password. Click on the VLANs icon located near the top left. I am going to quickly configure a working setup. I will go over a few items and explain how we use certain VLAN types to configure our solution. At the very top, I have selected port 1 as our trunk port. In VLAN 33, I have selected port 1 and port 15 as our tag ports. In VLAN 1 section, I have selected port 15 as our tag port. And I have excluded all the ports that will be used for the contractor wired computers. In VLAN 33, I have changed ports 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16 to untagged ports that will be used for our contractor wired computers. All right, I'm going to flip back to our diagram, and if you look carefully, you should see a pattern. Let me make this a little easier for you by having both items side by side. I have color-coded our VLAN ports to match up with our employee and contractor colors. You can see that the untagged ports are mutually exclusive to each other. Each untagged port that belongs to the employee VLAN cannot belong to the contractor VLAN, and vice versa. By making these ports untagged, we are telling the switch that we will be connecting a certain type of client device. This can be a PC, printer, or even an IP phone. So this is what is referred to as an access port by certain vendors. Along with the configuration we have done in PFSense, this will allow our client devices to be on the desired network and receive the correct IP address. Okay, now that we know a little bit about untagged ports, let's move on to tagged ports. In our example, we also need to route packets from the router to the switch and from switch to access point, and finally to the correct wireless network. We need a way to let the switch know that certain ports can have packets that belong to more than one VLAN. This is referred to as tag ports. I have color coded everything again, but this time with the tag ports, you can see that port 15 is tagged on both the employee and contractor VLAN. This tells the switch that both of the VLANs are allowed to pass through to the access point. We will discuss this more when we reach the access point configuration. So now we know what tagged and untagged ports do in our example. What we don't know is why we designated port 1 as the trunk port. Why port 1 is also designated as untagged for VLAN 1 and tagged for VLAN 33. Shouldn't they be tagged for both? Okay, let's start with the trunk port. In order for some equipment to be able to work properly with VLANs, we have to identify which port is used to send all the VLAN traffic to another switch or router. In our case, this is port 1. If we don't specify that port 1 is a trunk port, our VLAN routing becomes broken with our current combination of switch and router. Now, for the untagged port in VLAN 1, this looks like a bug in the switch. If we make this port a tagged port, the volume will be reset to untag as soon as we hit the apply settings. And that's all we need to configure on the switch. Our access point is plugged into port 15, which is a tag port for both our employee and contractor VLANs. With our access point, we will go through the default setup and we will apply the default network for our employees. For our contractor wireless network, we will create an additional network, but this time we assign VLAN tag 33. The access point will receive VLAN traffic for VLAN 1 and VLAN 33 and will route to the appropriate wireless network. And that's all we have to do for the access point setup. The only thing remaining now is to test our network. I will test by plugging my PC into a few ports and see what my IP address changes to. I am currently plugged into port 2 with an IP address of 192.168.1. Dot 100, which means I'm on the employee network. I will now move my PC cable from port 2 to port 13. Let's see what IP address we get. And our IP address is 192.168.33.100, which means we received the correct IP address for the contractor network.
And finally, let's move the cable back to port 10 and see if we can get an IP address from the employee network again. And we are back with 192.168.1.100. I will check the wireless network by using my phone and checking the DHCP leases from PFSense. I just connected to the employee Wi-Fi network and PFSense assigned 192.168.1.102. I connected to the contractor Wi-Fi now and PFSense assigned 192.168.33.101. So it looks like everything is working as expected. Let's do a little speed test from my phone and see that we are getting out to the internet and generating some traffic. And this is where I will end this video. Hopefully you learned something about VLANs and thanks for watching.